G'day folks and thanks for joining us. I'm Rex Hunt. Stick around for some real fishing action. <laughs> On today's Rex Hunt Fishing Adventures, we dedicate our entire program to John Wilson, the fishing guru of English television. John has spent many years creating a paradise for his beloved carp from what was once an old gravel pit. Folks, this is Great Witchingham in Norfolk. Now that's about three and a half hours easy drive northeast of London. And this is the home place of John Wilson, one of Britain's best loved anglers. Now he's got the right qualifications to join us, folks. Over 20 books written, countless magazine articles, and a television show into its 12th series. This is a nice place to go fishing yeah. right here. Yeah, I've made a feature here, Rex, of putting lilies all the way around the margins. Yeah. It's a bit difficult now and again, you get the carp stuck in them, but at least they're features and the carp tend to move about. Yeah. And um, by keeping your rod out, you can always, you know, St always land them. Structures, a bit of cover and <laughs> seed, right. it's basic, isn't it? The that's same it. thing. Yeah, that's it. Well, a man's home is his castle or castle, whichever part of the world you come from, but a man's home here is his lake. Tell us about this. Was this always here? No. Uh, this particular lake is only 12 years old. Is it really? Um, the lake that joins it, 200 yards away, that was dug during the last World War and uh, for the airfields at um, Western, which is about three miles away, and yeah. it was dug by Atlas Aggregates. And when I bought this property 15 years ago, I asked Atlas Aggregates if uh, there was enough minerals left along this site for them to excavate Mere Lake. And they said yes, and we did a deal, and, and 12 and a half, 13 years ago now, I cut down all these trees, three acres of, of small birch reaching to the sky with a bow saw, and uh, the diggers moved in, pulled up the roots, and they excavated the lake just how I wanted it, with islands and promontories and little bays and fish movement areas. And what about the weed and, of course, the important plant life? that is sort of just so important to the, well, the real basics of fish habitat. Yeah, well, I had to plant all that, all the lilies I planted, begged, stole and borrowed from people. Yeah. And um, I've got 30 species of lilies, and of course, all the way along the, the banks, I planted, I think, 32 different species of willow trees. Gee. About a dozen different um, types of conifers. I think I planted about five, um, 500. Yeah, 500 trees altogether. It yeah. seems a lot now, but uh, so the basic basics of fish habitat are cover, food, shelter, that sort of thing, structure, so they can sort of feel good. And you've got it all here. It's exactly. Quite amazing. Yeah. And the nice thing about it, Rex, is the fact that uh, the islands, for instance, provide a habitat for wildlife. Yeah. You know, us anglers are always getting knocked for fishing, aren't we? And yet here we are, fishing venue, but we've provided nesting sites for ducks and geese and, and stinging nettles and wild shrubs for butterflies and newts and frogs and toads. Does it spoil you with your love of fishing? You're fishing all over the world like I am for various species of sport fish. 
And if you've got a fantastic fishery right at your back door. Hmm. Well, actually, it's funny you should say that. I don't very often fish it myself. Yeah. I, um, I get a buzz out of having created it and letting other people enjoy it. Yeah. Um, so I don't often fish it myself, but it's a lovely place to live. Now, of course, now that fishing is becoming internationally recognised, mm. particularly through our program, through 109 countries, through Europe and the UK, I read a couple of books that you'd uh, written. Uh, I've seen videos of you. Mm. Where did the John Wilson public profile start? Uh, you know, oh. when you cease being just a private angler? It's a difficult one to answer, really. Um, I do a lot of writing like you, and I do the videos and the TV. And I started, funnily enough, uh, I spent the first 23 years of my life in a London flat. Did you really? Without a garden, without dogs and without animals. And it made me, you know, all the more eager when I made it in life, if I ever made it, to, to be able to create a piece of natural history yeah. and um, enjoy it on a day-to-day -day basis. And even though I don't fish it, I walk the dogs around the lakes every day and it's just, you know. One thing I've also noticed with the international recognition of fishing, particularly with people like yourself, is in Australia some of the well-worn ways are now being complemented by some of your methods. In other words, instead of using a big barrel sinker for whiting, you yeah. might use a block end or no, an open right. end feeder yeah, yeah. with plenty of bread or burley, as chum as you call it. And I just think we can all sort of learn off each other. If oh. you fish with a bloke in Russia, you can learn off something off him. If you fish with Les Patterson in Australia, <laughs> you're going to learn something off old Les, can't you, eh? <laughs> Is that what my wife said to you? That's what they call me Les Patterson, I'll tell you what. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Well, this is a, a nice place here, Steve. It's, um, although it's close to the house, it's well shielded with all these alders and willows behind us. And uh, this little growing on pond here that I first used oh. to breed the, the carp in, actually. But uh, now, of course, they're, they're much bigger. There's fish in here to 20 pounds. Well, I'll tell you what, John, this is a magnificent place you've got here. You've put some work into it. Thank you, yeah, 12 years of my life, actually. <laughs> <laughs> and what are we going to catch? Uh, temperature's been bad now for a couple of days. We had lots of rain, as you know. Um, it's chilled the water. We could get the odd carp along these lily pads, so we're going to fish with um, carp pellets, get them feeding on those, and then use cubes of lunch and meat as bait. OK, and, show um, me this rig you use. What do you, you call it a hair rig? It's a hair rig, but first of all, I'm fishing it in conjunction with four inches of peacock quill. A bit of red paint at the top. It's held on the line by a bit of silicon tubing so that if this go, the carp goes charging through the lilies, uh, the float comes out. You lose the float, doesn't matter, it costs you a few P, but you land the carp. Right. OK, and on this end, the business end, we've simply got one swan shot about five inches from a size eight strong forged hook. And as you can see, on the hook, I've just made a little dacron hair. And what it does, it means that fish that are spooky can come up, suck in the bait without feeding the hook, because the hook follows into their mouth. So the bait is actually on the hair, and the hook's not in the bait at all? Exactly. The, right. the bait's off the hook, and it, it's a real good confidence rig. And we put the bait on like this. First of all, we, onto the hair needle, we put a cube of luncheon meat like that. And that then goes into the loop on the hair. And it's sleeved onto it like that. And then, with one of these little green hair stops, we just slip that through the loop like that. OK? And there we are. The bait's like that, actually, off the hook. You've got full hooking potential because none of the hook is actually inside the meat, OK? And what happens with the float rig, because it's resting on the bottom like that, if a fish goes charging away, the float goes under. Mm. But if a fish comes and picks up the meat mm. and lifts up the shot, what happens? The float that's cocked suddenly goes and lies flat. Wham! And you're in straight away. Pretty cunning stuff. <laughs> Let's see if it works. OK. How about that, then? So, John, would carp fishing be one of the most popular types of fishing in Britain? Um, yes, yeah, it is, Steve. It's the most popular sport now. 
Um, years ago, before cormorant started eat, eating all the, the silver shellfish in our lakes and river systems, uh, it was the roach. The roach, which I believe you've got in Australia, haven't you? Yes, we have got some roach, yep. Yeah, well, well the roach was the most popular fish in British freshwater. And in the last 10 years, the balance has swung. People like the, the, the size of the carp, the way they fight hard. A lot of people don't understand that carp were actually introduced into Britain too, weren't they? That's right. They, I mean, they came from Asia. Uh, they were brought over by the, uh, the German monks initially um, in the 15th century. And, um, and they, of course, spread across Europe from, from China. And um, we've had carp in Britain now for probably four or five hundred years, something like that. Mm. And originally it was the wild carp that was mm -hmm. uh, imported. Um, but now, of course, we've got the, um, the king carp strains, all the strains that were bred for the European housewife that doesn't have scales on it, the, the leather carp, mm. so that she hasn't got to descale it. And all these king carp, very fast growing varieties, are mixed in with, with the, the old strains of the fully scaled common carp. We've got right. a bit of a mishmash, really. Give it a couple of minutes then. It's this funny old weather we're getting here at the moment, Steve, isn't it? Hey? <laughs> <laughs> Changes every ten minutes. I know, there's lots of little rud knocking knocking our baits, but um we don't seem to be getting any carp right now. I think, I'll tell you what we'll do, we'll just move about 50 yards down the lake. There's a pretty little spot there where there's some lily pads. I don't know, my bait's gone anyway. Let's move around there. All right. And, um, you got me. See if we can uh, encourage something there. Right, follow me. They keep moving between all these gaps, back in here, through, around your little well, look, bay there, don't they? Look, that one has been past my bait about three times. You can see there where it's stirred up in the mud. <laughs> yeah, it's all smoking, isn't it? Uh, I love to see that, because any... Oh, no, oh yes! <laughs> <laughs> Hang on, let me wind this in. Oh, oh, it's straight under the lilies. I'll bring my rod in. Oh, dear. Oh. You'll have to get in after that, I'm oh, afraid. No. Uh, well, at last, thank goodness oh, for that. I'll, uh... Worth getting wet feet for. Well, I haven't got any boots on, but... <laughs> <laughs> I'll come in and uh, we'll do our best to get this out because I don't, uh, I don't like losing them in the lilies, do you? He's gone down that channel and the line's stuck oh here. God, I don't know. Is it really? How deep is it? Oh no, it's fairly sharp. It's a hard bottom here, very hard. Um, what bait was that? The uh, two, um, two pellets. Now where is it? He's down the back there. The line's still under here. Oh, uh, is it? Yeah, he's quite some distance away. Okay, down there. I'll just see if I can uh, free this line from these lilies here. Yep, that's looking Nick good. Nick one, pearl two. Yeah. I, oh, it's there. Yep. It's coming out. Hang it's on. coming out. I don't want to get in, in your way here. It's not a huge fish, but... No. Uh, wow, didn't they go in those pads? You want to just clear that little bit? Yeah. There? I'm just breaking a few of my expensive lilies here, Steve, <laughs> so, so that you can land this, you know. Right. right. Hold your rod up yeah, yeah. really high. Yeah, I'm right. I've got him. Oh, hang on. Right. <laughs> yeah, <Yowza. laughs> <laughs> Well, that wasn't exactly <laughs> copybook stuff. But well, after all the hours we've put in, I don't mind how first, we get them out. You got your first English carp here. What That's the hell? Right. I think we can break for lunch then, don't you? And a change of clothes. Right. Let's uh, let's have a look. That's a nice little common. Lovely fish. Well, Steve, that's your first English carp, isn't oh, it? What a lot of work. <laughs> <laughs> well, this weather hasn't been for us, you know. Let's put him on the unhooking Oop. mat there. This is why we've got these around gravel pit fisheries, because if you put a, a carp down on the gravel, then, you know, it, it uh, yeah. hurts itself. So he's a fully scaled common. Yeah, it's a common, probably very similar to the ones that you've got in Aussie, isn't it? Very similar, yeah. Uh, let's Look, just use the, the four tips. Whoops. 
to get your hook out. Um, He's probably a little fatter for his length than the ones we get in Oz. Yeah. But um, well, where's the hook? Yeah, you're similar. There it is, just in the bottom lip there. I guess most of the hookups are like that with the hair rigs, are they? Yeah, yeah, that's the idea. You know, they suck the bait in mm. and the, the hook's free to, yep. to get them, really. What's he, five or six pound? Yeah, it's a nice little fish. You've caught, uh, unfortunately, one of the smaller fish, <laughs> fish in this lake. But, uh, hey. I don't mind. <laughs> You've caught one. Absolutely, give us a look at him. Well done. Well, there we go. I've come halfway around the world <laughs> to catch something that at home we knock on the head and throw up the bank. It's, uh, it's different, uh, different strokes for different folks. Over yeah. here, people spend days hunting these fish, and I can see why, because they're educated fish here, and they don't come easy. <laughs> it's a challenge, and when you get one, it's a thrill. Fantastic. Look at that. Okay. Oh, I better get him back in the water. Okay. And surprise, surprise, it started raining again. Yeah. It's done this about every 10 minutes since we've been here, but in between, it's beautiful. You caught that just in time, Steve. Yeah. You know what they say about Britain? It does rain every day. <laughs> well, it is for you, isn't it? Well, one thing you could say about the place, if you don't like the weather now, just wait <laughs> 10 minutes. Yeah. I mean, here we are midday, and most of the lilies aren't out, so you can see how cold this water is. Look at this one here. Isn't that beautiful? That oh, lily. that's a nice one, isn't it? There we are. There's, a, there's an English scene for you. A, a lovely carp next to a lily. Uh, he's going to come good. No problems at oh, all. <laughs> and away he goes. Uh, well, John, thank you very much. Pleasure. <laughs> My first English carp. I don't think I'll forget that in a hurry. <laughs> Fantastic, and what a place. Well, there you are, folks. Johnny Wilson's own personalised carp pond. There's something there to dream about, and dreams do come true.